Hello and what is up YouTube, my name is G3Iron and the long-awaited, much-anticipated six builds for League starting in 3.10 Delirium League is finally here. Today we'll be discussing six different builds with six different ascendancies and classes for you to choose from as you are making your wise selection to get started in the upcoming 3.10 Delirium League. For those of you who are new to the channel, you can go ahead and like, subscribe, and ding the bell to be notified about more video discussions just like this one. And if you're a veteran of the channel, then you know how the way everything around here here works. There are timestamps placed for your convenience down below in the video description, along with all of the path of buildings and links to the updated forum guides for each of these builds that we will be discussing today. If you'd like to join us on Discord, our Discord is open to everyone and there are perks for Patreon supporters. And if you'd like more information about that, again, that's included down below in the video description. So without any further ado, let's get into six builds that you might want to choose from as you league start. Now they call me a criminal for defending my honor. Build number one that I would like to recommend for your league starter is a duelist champion that features Cyclone and Impale. Yes, we are looking at putting all of the most OP things together in one single league starter. This particular version of an Impaled Champion Cycloner is put together by Dex2644. You can see that he took the game relatively seriously during Metamorph League as he had 39 challenges completed most recently. One of the excellent aspects about this particular build is that it's updated, it has no required uniques, and it walks through each of the various mechanics that are available to this build that make it so very solid. In addition to combining some of the most OP mechanics that are available in Path of Exile presently, Dex has put together a build that can go either Slayer or Champion. Personally, when I go Champion on this particular build, I would recommend going Master of Metal first in order to gain additional Impale stacks, then make your way towards Fortitude, which gives you Fortify, and lastly, round out your build with Conqueror that will help you negate enemy incoming damage. If you're choosing to follow this build straight up as a Slayer, then you can of course do that as well, starting off with Overwhelm, into Headsman, and then eventually Bane of Legends, rounding out your Uber selection with impact for even greater damage based on your AoE of Cyclone. On this exact build, Dex was able to take down every single boss in the game deathless with less than 10 exalts invested. So this makes this a wonderful league starter as you are building up a pool of currency and a pool of maps as you take down your first several watchstones and begin to expand out your options for the rest of the league. There are ways to upgrade your gear and clear pointed paths that Dex provides in the build guide for you to know exactly how to move from A to B in your upgrade options. And on top of that, all of us are of course excited with the fog mechanics that are coming in Delirium to make builds that will take advantage of building up momentum pushing through a map. The more you kill, the more you'll be able to kill. Those sorts of mechanics are very, very strong or at least projected to be that way in Delirium. And of course, taking advantage of a momentum-based mechanic like Rampage is something that this this build has access to through using Sinvictus's axe, which is right next to me. You can operate that on a weapon swap. I bet a whole bunch of you out there didn't know that you could put Sinvictus's in your second hand offhand setup, equip it, gives you Rampage, and then equip back to your main actual weapons, and boom, you've got Rampage for the rest of the map or until it expires and you stop killing things. If you are looking for an OP build that takes advantage of all of the various great mechanics that are available presently in 3.10 and will probably be nerfed in the future, now is the time to take advantage of the Duelist Champion that features Cyclone and Impale. It's sublime. Simple job, I was told. Silence a big mouth, get a big payout. The second build that I'd like to suggest to you today is a Shadow Assassin that takes advantage of stacking poison onto its enemies through the use of Blade Vortex. Exol the Insane has completed 40 challenges in the Metamorph League. He knows what he's doing as he's building guides, and he's done a wonderful job of putting together a low-cost, very well thought out build guide that will take you from level one to wherever it is that you want to go in the end game of Path of Exile. This particular build is a mixture of speed as well as bossing potential. On this particular character, Exile the Insane was able to take out Cirrus 
all in the Cortex encounter. And his weapons are incredibly cheap. Most oftentimes, as people are thinking about playing assassins, they think that it's going to be very, very expensive to get all of the crit and all of the damage that is needed to get the most out of that particular ascendancy. Well, with this particular league starter for Poison Blade Vortex, you can ramp up your damage rather quickly through the use of Cold Iron Point, Obliteration Wands, Beano's Kitchen Knife, or Mist Wall as a shield option. You've got very great budget options for you to get early on in a league that can then scale up your damage as you progress further into the Atlas. If you're a fan of Poison, if you're a fan of using the Assassin's true potential to its fullest capabilities, I would highly recommend the Poison Blade Vortex Assassin. Death is my brother. I do not fear him. Build number three that I would recommend is a Marauder Berserker Wander. That's right, you've heard me say it all throughout the hype train building up to 3.10's release day that Wanders are going to be meta in the upcoming 3.10 Delirium League. And one way to play them is actually with a Berserker. Now thematically, you might be thinking, oh, a Berserker as a Wander. What the heck? That blows my mind. Well, Incredible has done an incredible job of putting together a great guide with compiled videos as well as details about all of the mechanics and all of the boosts and buffs that you're going to take advantage as you berserk your way through the Atlas and the bosses and the encounters that we can expect in the upcoming Delirium League. As I tried this build out this week, I can validate that there are several working pros to this build and a couple of cons that you're going to want to watch out for. First off, this build really does work on a budget. Wands nowadays that used to be absolutely garbage are going to be exceptional because of all of the changes that have come to skills, to damages, and to passive nodes that are built off of wands as your base weapon. This build is going to be able to take advantage of what used to be considered very terrible wands and push very, very far, very, very quickly with exceptional single target DPS on what is otherwise known as a Wander as a map clearing character. So this gives you an option to play a Wander to go as fast as you can go and to scale up your build as you generate currency and as you fill out your Atlas. One con that Incredible is upfront about is that this particular build won't be able to do tier 16s without investment. Okay, show me the League Starter that will be able to do that. There are a lot of different builds out there that are going to have various uniques that are required. This build doesn't necessarily require a whole bunch of uniques, and you can push relatively far into the Atlas without heavy investment. If you want to get the top end of this particular build, sure, you're going to need to invest in it. But that's true about every build in Path of Exile as we're all seeking to min-max. The one con to really watch out for as you're playing this build is that if you run out of buffs, then your character slows down. So this is a very ramp up dependent character, which of course those of you who have played Berserker since its most recent changes, you know that already. Berserkers inherently build momentum as they kill and as they stack their rage throughout a particular zone, instance, or map. And so if you're looking for something to build momentum and to go zoom zoom while killing bosses while using wands in the new 3.10 league, highly recommend that you choose Incredibles Incredible Wanding Berserker. Every soul has a birth given right to live however they will, however they can. The fourth recommended build that I've got for you today is a Ranger Deadeye that focuses on using Ice Shot. You can go around on either a 5 link or a 6 link and take down whatever sorts of content you want to quickly farm as you are pushing yourself to generate a successful league start for your own goals. Cynix Processing has done an exceptional job of putting together several little discussion capsules, whether that's looking at mechanics of the offensive characteristics of this build, whether that's looking at the defensive layers of this build, whether or not that's leveling with this build and how you can progress, whether or not that's upgrading your items and what you should prioritize as you continue to level up and continue to sink currency into this build. This particular version of Deadeye Eyeshot is well-rounded in its approach in terms of accessibility of content. You will be able to read this forum post and know whether or not you need to make decision A 
or decision B as you're leveling and as you're mapping and as you're upgrading your items. Many of you might be wondering why not Raider and why not Pathfinder, why Deadeye? Simply put, Deadeye gives you a 10% more multiplier for each remaining chain, which adds a ton of damage. And again, is helpfully pointed out by Syndix Processing in one of these little helpful discussion capsules that he's got labeled throughout the various build guide. If you are looking for copious amounts of notes that explain and define for you exactly why decisions are being made, then this guide is going to help you as you league start. I would have died for my Templar brothers. Every single one. The fifth build guide that we've got today is a Templar Inquisitor using Stormbrand. Those of you who are veterans of Path of Exile know that Stormbrand, since its release in 3.5, has a history of being used by racers, by professional players who want to push as far as they can get, as quickly as they can get, in Path of Exile. And Stormbrand has not necessarily dropped out of favor as being a speed clear skill. Metalcrawler provides us with several different ways that we can play this build, whether or not we want to play this as a life-based character, as a low-life ES-based boss killer. Depending on how we want to run this particular character, we can orient ourselves to be more emphasized on speed clearing in maps or on taking down bosses. In addition to the flexibility of this particular build and the outlines that Metal Crawler has provided us with, we also have great explanations as to why an Inquisitor and an explanation for progressing through the Inquisitor tree at exactly the right points. For instance, he explains that Sanctuary is your consecrated ground generator and that is going to be key as we are playing both offensively and defensively around consecrated ground. We get consecrated ground whenever it is that we stop to cast anything. Whether we're shield charging, whether we're flame dashing, or whether we're casting Stormbrand itself. Whenever we are stopping to cast something that has an animation, we will create consecrated ground, and those effects will free us from things like elemental ailments for four seconds, which is massive quality of life on a League Starter build when you don't otherwise have those ailment immunity flasks set up yet. His last explanation about Inevitable Judgment is simply priceless. He says, Inevitable Judgment is the final blow and makes Inquisitor a super simple character to play and powerful since PoE's Awakener expansion. Don't waste your time with elemental curses like Elemental Weakness, Conductivity, or Frostbite. You're already going to ignore all elemental resistances if you crit. If you are worried about how monsters now have more resistances since the 3.9 expansion and update to monsters, don't worry about it. Inquisitor doesn't care one bit about monster resistances when they crit. They were right to fear me. If only they had listened to their cowardice. Our sixth and final build that we are going to suggest to you as a League Starter is of course a Witch Necromancer using Animate Weapon. You didn't think you were going to get out of here without me recommending some form of summoner to you, did you? This particular guide written by Moloch13 does a great job of walking you through all of the mechanics of Animate Weapon. I personally have been visiting this particular forum guide and interacting all this entire week so that way I personally will learn about how Animate Weapon works. If anybody out there starts pretending that there's some Animate Weapon expert, chances are, unless they've got a long storied history proving that that's a track record, they're just a hipster trying to latch on to the 3.10 buffs and saying, yeah, I knew all along. No, you didn't. Animate Weapon is great now, and it's fantastic in the hands of somebody like Moloch13 who knows exactly what to do with it, including cold conversion. Did you ever think that you should cold convert your damage off of Animate Weapon? Well, take a look at his argument as to why and then explain to me why you wouldn't. There is of course included in Moloch's written guide a leveling section that's quite helpful but in reality you can start off with thanks to the new various blade blast skills very very early on summoning a whole bunch of animate weapons and even capping at that 14 new weapon cap very early on in your gameplay and simply crush whatever content the campaign has got for you and then scale up your build as you continue to level and continue to unlock ascendancy nodes which is where a whole bunch of damage is going to come from once you get unnatural strength and plus two to the level of all of your summoner gems. Thanks so much for watching today and for subscribing. I've got a couple of questions that you can drop us a comment and let us know what your plans are for League Start. First off, what builds are you considering League Starting? And out of any of these six, 
Which of the six looks most appealing to you? When you swap builds from one league to another, what's the determining factor for you? When will you do it? Will it be white maps? Will it be yellow maps? Will it be act two when you realized you should have chosen one of the six builds that we just recommended? And lastly, what will you do if a mirror of Calandra drops for you in Delirium? Will you hold on to it? Will it be a trophy? Will you use it on a wander that you found on the strand? How are you going to use a mirror of Calandra if one drops for you in 3.10 Delirium? Thanks so much for watching, and I hope that this league is the league a mirror of Calandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.